if you're coming from the previous lesson, hope you are, because remember we needed to download a couple of things. One was the Kindle plugin, Mac or Windows, and one was the Kindle previewer. Actually, there was a third thing that really is good, and that's that PDF document on working with InDesign and working with Kindle. Really is a good document to have. Now, I'm expecting that you installed this right here, the plugin. Very easy, double click on it, follow the instructions. Once that's done, now you have to have InDesign closed to make that happen. Now, let's go into our work folder and let's reopen up our INDD Phoenix project. This is actually pretty cool. Now, remember, I have already installed the plugin. Now here's our document, just the way we left it from the previous chapter. If I go up to the word File, I now have a new feature, Export for Kindle. Now, it's not the best thing in the world, I'll be honest with you, but it does work, and they are constantly updating the plugin. Some of the things it won't do. It doesn't like when you use the Articles panel. Now, we talked about that earlier on how you can use the Articles panel to control what gets downloaded when. It ignores that. It doesn't work with additional CSS. It doesn't rasterize things that you ask to rasterize. And in order to have a cover, it has to be a separate document. It won't rasterize the first page. Other than that, there's not a whole lot of difference. But I want to see what this thing looks like on Kindle. So we're going to come down here, export for Kindle. I'll call it Phoenix Project Mobi. Now it will create both of the files. That's the Mobi 7 and the KF8. It does them both. I'm going to put it in build, which is our work folder. Click save. It does look a lot like the EPUB export, doesn't it? It's got some different entries, but it looks similar. I will also mention to you, don't forget, this is version 0.973. You may see another number up here because they are upgrading this all the time, and you may see different options. That's why I want you to download that PDF document because it gives you detail on everything you see here. Let's go through some of this stuff. Number one, in general, Yes, I do want to include my InDesign TOC, and I will use the style we already created, Fiction EPUB. We did that earlier. Table of Contents is the name. Do I want my format to be indented, flat, or actually a, that's kind of interesting, a numbered or bulleted list for your TOC? I'm just going to leave that at indented. We have link to a custom. Now you have to have text anchors to make that work, and we didn't do that, so we're not going to do it. Here's our cover image. Click here. Let's go into the build, which is our work folder, and there it is. I'm not a big fan of embedding fonts because the viewer does control that, so I think I'll leave that off. Don't embed any fonts. We're not going to view it after exporting. We're going to use the previewer for that. Go to contents. We can have them start reading at a particular location if we have text anchors, which we don't. This one right here is kind of interesting. I'm going to turn both these off because I am used to creating my ebooks with the idea that they are basically HTML, which doesn't look for white spaces and new lines. So I don't like to do that because then it's going to use everything that I see over here. Once I get used to doing it that way, I might leave those on. So I'm going to leave all that stuff off. I don't have any footnotes, but where do you want them if you are using them? Let's go into images. Now this looks pretty similar. You've got alignment, optimization, etc. We'll leave this stuff at default. Metadata, yeah, we want this. Author, publisher, we'll call it Acme Publishing. The publication date, if you don't put that in there, it's going to use today's date. It's up to you. I'll leave it out. If you don't have an ISBN, Amazon will add one in there automatically for you as a random number. If you got one, go ahead and put it in. If you want to add a description, you do that here. On updates, well, of course I wanted to check for updates. I want the latest plugin I can get, so I would leave that on. This is a new feature. Join the Plugin Usage Improvement Program, which by default is on, which means they kind of keep an eye on what you're doing. If you feel a bit paranoid today, you might want to turn that one off. It gets stripped out of the document when you save it anyway. It's up to you. I'm going to leave it on. Now, you have a quick or a guided export. Depending on what I did up here, the buttons I clicked and what's going on over here will determine if I go guided what I'll see. 
Now, if I click it, I don't think I'm going to see anything. Why? Well, there wasn't anything special in this document that it needed to have questions answered. So we're done. Let's go ahead and get out of here and let's go ahead and save it. And then quit. Okay, now there it is. And here we are down here. Open up the previewer first. Open book over here. Now notice it supports Moby's EPUBs. Hmm. HTML and OPF. OPF is for like people who are doing everything from scratch. Let's open up a book. We know where it is. It's in the build and there it is. Click open. Let's check out the cover up here. You say, well, wait a minute. What happened to all my nice color? The default viewer it's using, if you go up to here, is the e-ink, which are grayscale. If you go to fire, there's your color. And we can go through this page by page down here to see if we like what it did. That's not too bad. Now you can use the previewer just like we used anything else. But there is one problem. It's not really a problem, but let me just state something here. When you create a Mobi file, I talked about getting into the EPUB. Remember we talked about getting into the XHTML? actually ripping it apart, pulling it apart, and making changes that InDesign couldn't do. You can't do that with a Mobi file. Now, is that a bad thing? Well, not necessarily. But you're going to have to go back and forth, just like anything else we've done in InDesign. If you don't like it, you go back to InDesign, you do it again, you save it again. But this previewer, along with that wonderful export, I do like that, allows me now to put it into a form which can be used by Amazon and Kindle and just happens to be 80% of the market. Who wouldn't want to be there?